Well, good evening, everyone. It is March the 15th, Wednesday, and it is unfortunately severe weather season, and we're going to see a severe weather, potentially anyway, a severe weather episode tomorrow. So I wanted to talk to you about that really quick, kind of give you an idea of what to expect. Got some new model data coming in, so definitely wanted to go over that. And before we get too far into the stream, I want to thank our sponsors who helped make this happen. Uh, Amen Plumbing and Bacon Roofing. Uh, as I like to say on my podcast, Amen Plumbing, you'll say amen after they visit you if you need plumbing issues or you have plumbing issues. And a Bacon Roofing, John Bacon, the owner. I know on one hand he doesn't want to see you after tomorrow, uh, but uh, if you need somebody after tomorrow, he would definitely be the one to talk to. So thank you to our sponsors, Amen Plumbing and Bacon Roofing, for making this live stream happen. All right, well, as you can see outside, rather balmy for the mid part of March, 64 degrees. That will be basically the case tomorrow with we'll pricey temperatures get close to 70 tomorrow. And that will set the stage for some showers and thunderstorms, unfortunately, some of which will be severe. And so that's what we want to talk about tonight to kind of get you ready for tomorrow. So first and foremost, let's go ahead and talk about what our probabilities are. This is the latest from the Storm Prediction Center, and this is our severe weather outlook for tomorrow. And just to remind you that we have uh, our color codes. We have our light green, our lightest green, which is general thunderstorms. The darker green, marginal risk of severe thunderstorms. The yellow, slight risk. And the orange, moderate risk. Or excuse me, I'm sorry, enhanced risk, not a moderate risk. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised if that was upgraded tomorrow to, to a moderate risk, but that is something that uh, we'll definitely have to watch for. But right now, just an enhanced risk, which is not great anyway, but it's something that we definitely want to keep an eye on. So that's the general severe weather parameters. Now let's get into specifics. This is the tornado threat. And again, the green is a two, two to 4% chance. The uh, brown, which includes most of Dallas Fort Worth, uh, get into the five to 10% chance. And uh, again, most of the tornado activity, if we see that would be northeast of Dallas Fort Worth, but we certainly can't rule it out for our area. This is a wind, severe wind probabilities. And again, this is winds that would be above severe criteria, which is 57 miles an hour uh, or higher, of course. And again, the brown 5% chance, yellow 10% chance, a 10 to 20% chance. And then the, the red is a 30 to 45% chance of seeing severe winds greater than 57 miles per hour. Uh, and as you can tell, <laughs> Dallas-Fort Worth, mainly north and east of Dallas-Fort Worth, we see that probability. So it's, again, that would not be uncommon if we had a severe thunderstorm, especially a supercell severe thunderstorm, to where uh, we would see something like that. Now, here's the one that everybody always gets excited about, for, for good reason, is these are our hell probabilities. So again, to go over the percentages, 5 to 15% in the brown. The yellow is 15 to 30 percent chance. The red is 30 to 45 percent chance. And the hatched black area is uh, where we could see significant hail, 10 percent chance of seeing significant hail, which is two inches in diameter or larger. Uh, and unfortunately, uh, you see that right over Dallas Fort Worth and up the I 35 corridor into Oklahoma. So, right now, the thinking is that we would see. Uh, if we saw these uh, supercell thunderstorms, which we probably will see some somewhere in the area, it would these would be hail producers, and unfortunately, some of them would be rather large hail producers, and that's we don't like to see that, but that is just something that comes with the territory sometimes when we see this. Now, the other thing I would say with all these severe weather probabilities that the Storm Prediction Center puts out is that remember, this is the percentage chance of seeing a severe weather event, whether you're talking about a tornado, hail, high winds within 25 miles of a point. And of course, the point could be your house. And so that's another way to look at it. And like I always like to say, even in our most uh, dire predicted severe weather events, and this, I would say, doesn't fall under that necessarily, uh, most people statistically won't see severe weather. And so I think that's always going to hold true 99% of the time. And I think that would hold true tomorrow. However, if you are one of the unlucky ones that does see severe weather, it could be rather significant. That's why we're talking tonight. And unfortunately, in a, and we'll be talking about this tomorrow, I'm sure. But that'll be more of an update, keep you updated on what's going on. All right, so let's show you 
a model here and I want to give you an idea of what we may be looking at tomorrow. Now, for those of y'all who are just joining us, this is not a, a current uh, radar and I just switched the time frame. So this is our famous or infamous for some people, uh, the Triple HR model. It does a very good job of uh, predicting uh, thunderstorm development in a convective sense. It's not always right. Uh, I did a HR, Triple HR, uh, H triple R model run at our last severe weather event two weeks ago. And this is something that uh, it, it, it was pretty doggone close when we were looking at that two weeks ago. So this is actually 11 p.m. tonight. So we're going to fast forward uh, a little bit. So this is 5 a.m. tomorrow. And from an overall standpoint, not expecting a whole lot. 6 a.m., 7 a.m., you know, we could see some activity, but not expecting much. 8 a.m., 9 a.m., 10 a.m., 11 a.m. Maybe maybe some rain showers, thunderstorms popping up. And this is where it starts to get interesting. So this is noon. This is again. This is a simulation. This is noon to where we would start to see some thunderstorms pop up. And what you see here is that you might see some activity. Uh, again, it's just a model representation, but that's where you start to see some storms maybe popping up a little bit. And let me take this off with this back on okay so we'll, we'll advance the frame to 1 p.m. so you start to see a little bit of activity in northeast of us and then uh, 2 p.m. now right now again the thing I would point out is and if you remember that severe weather probability for tornadoes is in this kind of area and that's I think you're starting to see these supercell uh, model depictions pop up around that time frame uh, we'll go back to that model here. All right, so this is 2 p.m. And then 3 p.m. Again, you see a lot of activity in northeast Texas. That's not uncommon for what the models are showing. Uh, 4 p.m. Uh, this is when it starts to get interesting. So this is 5 p.m. tomorrow. Again, this is the HRRR model, simulated model, to where you could see some, that's when we might see supercells start to pop up. And of course, if you look, we'll zoom in here a little, well, let's see, let me turn this off. I think we can, yeah, we'll zoom in a little bit like this. So again, a model simulation, if you will. Uh, hey, Andrew, how are you, sir? Watching on YouTube side. Thank you, sir, appreciate that. Um, you, you see some potential supercells popping up, so we'll fast forward to 6 p.m. <laughs> Not looking great. <laughs> 7 p.m. Uh, 8 p.m. Now, this is when the actual cold front would come through, and that is uh, where we'd see a line of hours and thunderstorms, and then 9 p.m., 10 p.m., and so forth. And as we get a little further out, that is something that we're expecting to move on out. Uh, so that's one model. We have several models. I'm not going to show you them all because they're pretty boring. But <laughs> it's something that a dice trip bar is typically – a good model to give us an idea of what to expect and that's something that you know like I said we're uh, you know not uh, not really thrilled about tomorrow but uh, you know again it's it's gonna be okay no matter what now we're gonna go back to the slides here and we'll advance this a uh, couple more slides so what to expect for our area tomorrow specifically now this is going to change uh, when you wake up tomorrow morning you're going to see uh, some changes, probably not a lot of big changes, but you're going to see some changes, some tweaks to the uh, areas where we think we'll see severe weather. So like I said, it's uh, in the morning, uh, probably not too much going on. We would probably see uh, some showers and thunderstorms. They probably wouldn't be severe. That's not totally out of the question, but could be, but probably not. Uh, as we get into the afternoon hours, especially after 3 p.m., uh, we would see those supercell thunderstorms forming excuse me, forming uh, in and around the area. Could be right on top of us, could be north of us, could be northeast of us. And again, this model will change in the morning, so I'll be real curious to see what happens then. And then uh, then as we get 5, 6 p.m., 7 p.m., 8 p.m., the cold front we're gonna come, is going to come through and may see a line of storms, probably will see a line of storms. I don't think it's going to be anything intense, like as intense as it was too ironically, <laughs> two Thursdays ago. Uh, I don't think we're going to see those kind of winds. Not, not in a widespread sense. I think we would see them isolated, but the, you know that line is going to move through as a model depicted. And then, of course, then the severe weather is going to be over, and then it's going to be winter again for probably a week or so 
that it's going to feel like winter anyway. Not every single minute every, of every single day, but it's not going to be 75 and sunny, that's for sure. Speaking of which, so, uh, well, before we do that, so tonight, starting late tonight and tomorrow, uh, into tomorrow night, uh, going to have gusty winds regardless. We had some gusty winds today. Going to have some gusty winds tomorrow out of the south tomorrow, and then tomorrow night it's going to be out of the north. And when that cold front comes through, which would be a rather strong cold front for this time of year, uh, it's going to be cold. It's going to be that classic get cold before Easter. Uh, Easter's April uh, 9th, I think. Good Friday is April 7th. So <laughs> we always tend to get that cold snap before Easter. I don't think this year is going to be any different. Speaking of which, so this is early Saturday morning temperature forecast, and the bold numbers there show the average temperature we might see. So Dallas Fort Worth proper, 37. That's not that big a deal from a freezing standpoint. It's going to be cold, that's for sure. But if you look at the little bitty numbers, especially northwest of Dallas Fort Worth, we probably would see freezing, maybe upper 20s. So if you have happened to plant anything in your garden, which uh, hopefully you haven't, <laughs> other than onions and garlic and things that grow underground, uh, if you have, then you want to take precautions in the next day or two uh, after the storms move through on Friday, especially. You want to take precautions to protect those tender vegetation any vegetables you might have planted because if it does get down to freezing then especially when they're start starting to grow is they're not going to survive so but if you haven't planted your garden yet like i haven't then you don't have anything to worry about uh, wait a couple more weeks or at least a week and then you can do that and we won't see this anymore and as always before we know it we're going to see temperatures <laughs> way too warm but that's that's way down the line so that's again after the that's after the cold front. So we you know gotta get through the storms uh, first. All right. So I think I don't see a lot in the chat. I did say hi to Andrew earlier, and Andrew, hope you're doing well. And I think that it is. Let's see. I don't know that they. I want to show you this North American model real quick. And it. Uh, let's see if I can get. The, oops. Well, no. It's, Oh, it's, oh, wow. It's, okay, we're going to go back to the old one here and see if we can't. Uh, it's 8 a.m., 3 p.m., 4. Let's skip ahead. Okay, yeah. This is, we just did H triple R last time. Uh, so this, and we'll go, yeah, 5 o'clock. So you can see at 5 o'clock here, we'll put this in motion. Oh, I'll try to. And you can see this. This model represents the front pretty good uh, coming on through. Probably see some post-frontal rain early Friday morning, and then we'll go ahead and stop that. So, again, they, they sh depict the line of thunderstorms moving through with the front a little better than HR, tr HRRR did. And let's see. Yeah, that's still loading up, but we'll go ahead and start the HRRR uh, in case you missed it before. And this is tomorrow morning. Getting into tomorrow afternoon, you see these supercells develop. They don't the H triple R doesn't show the line too much, but I think it is going to come through uh, after the uh, after the supercell threat is finished. I think we will see the line of storms move through. Uh, and you know what? I didn't change the slide, so my apologies. <laughs> All right, we'll go. There we go. Okay, now <laughs> I always do that. All right, so let's do this. And again, this is 12 p.m., 1 p.m., 2 p.m. Uh, there you go, 2 p.m., 3 p.m., 4 p.m. So not a whole lot going on, most likely. Like I said, the, the kind of hour we really start to watch is, is 5 o'clock, which is depicted here, 6 o'clock, 7 o'clock. And there's that line that's depicted a little bit with the H triple R at 9 o'clock. And then 10 o'clock. Hello, Paula. Uh, oh, you're welcome, Paula. Um, I just want to keep everybody up to date on tomorrow. I, I And I guess I would uh, end the stream by saying this, is that just a couple things to keep in mind. Uh, if you're just joining us, uh, uh, this will be posted on my social media channels after it's over, so you can rewatch it. But tomorrow morning, probably not a big deal. Uh, and in most cases, at least most models we look at, it won't be a big deal until the afternoon, probably at the three o'clock. Now that could change. So when we wake up tomorrow morning, uh, the mod we'll, th we will have run some more models and we'll, do we'll see what happens. Having said all that. So I know it's spring break for a lot of us. And so just something else to keep in mind. Hey, heck you may be watching not even in town. Um, it is something that again, it's, it's a something you want to be aware of. It's nothing to get too overly concerned about. 
it is uh, you just want to be aware so if you do have plans outdoor plans tomorrow just especially after three o'clock just want to keep that in mind you could have some rough weather uh, not everybody's going to see rough weather like I always like to say but uh, somebody in North Texas probably will and matter of fact I'm going to go back to the map here and again for those of y'all who just joined us Kind of give you an idea again. So, enhanced risk for severe weather for our area. That will that may I would be shocked if the storm prediction center tomorrow morning upgraded that to moderate, but hopefully not. But again, definitely uh, a chance to see some severe weather. Uh, the tornado risk was is kind of Dallas Fort Worth northeast. Uh, that's obviously not an exact science. Uh, severe wind threat, fifty seven miles an hour or higher. Dallas points northeast Texas. And then, as I said, the hail depiction map, uh, the hatched area is 10% chance of seeing hail two inches in diameter or larger. So it, that's something that we would, uh, you know, unfortunately, we're kind of under the bullseye with that. I think that'll be tweaked a little bit. I don't think that they'll tweak it enough to where it'll change a whole lot between now and tomorrow. But uh, I think we'll see some tweaks tomorrow, that's for sure. So that's that's so there's our threat, I think, from a severe weather threat. The biggest concern we have tomorrow is hail, and then behind, right behind that is tornadoes, but probably not as much. And then, of course, an overall stormy sense, we'll probably see some of that. And then uh, and as we move into the nighttime hours, the cold front will come through. All that will come to an end, and we'll see much colder weather, more winter-like weather, especially on Friday. Gusty winds, it, it just it, it, won't, it won't feel like spring, I put it that way. So tomorrow, probably early on, probably going to be okay. And then as we get into the afternoon, just be weather aware. I'll be watching it, of course, uh, as I always do, uh, to keep everybody up to date. Hopefully, there won't be a whole lot to update everybody, if you know what I mean. But unfortunately, there probably will be. But it's just something that we just got to gotta watch. And that's why I get on here and talk about it, especially the night before. Just wanna, Like I said, there's no reason to panic, anything like that. Uh, but just be weather aware, as we like to say. I will do a update that, um, you know, so, uh, on Facebook uh, in the morning, kind of a, a, a text update, and then uh, you know we'll uh, we'll go from there as the day progresses. That's for sure. All right, so uh, let's see. Da, 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 da. Hey, Michael. Uh, oh, you're welcome. It's uh, I, I like keeping everybody informed. Hey, Blake, how are you doing, sir? Uh, <laughs> I love days where we need to be weather aware. Well, I'm not gonna lie, I do too. But you know, I I, I don't want to see obviously any of the bad stuff happen. You know, kind of the joke is. Uh, you know, if we see, if we see tornadoes or we see hail or something like that and eh, just be out in the open field <laughs> so it doesn't hurt anything. Uh, so I'm kind of with you there. You're welcome, Gail. Uh, I know Gail, we talked a few weeks ago, if, uh, it was two weeks ago tomorrow that we went, uh, talking about uh, the weather up in your area. So, uh, hopefully you don't have a repeat of that, uh, tomorrow. Uh, and as I mentioned earlier, if you're just joining us, I, I don't see a, a, a widespread, uh, damaging wind event that we saw, um, two weeks ago, but definitely something that, you know, we're, some people, unfortunately, are going to see severe weather anywhere in this, uh, ha in the color-coded area, in the hatched area. Uh, oh, Cindy, you're welcome. No problem, ma'am. Um, and I guess, too, just uh, probably something I didn't touch on, but since we have this map up, uh, if you do know people, relatives, friends, uh, that live in any of the shaded areas, uh, which is a lot of people in a lot of territory, but especially in the yellow and again, this is a hail map, and you know what? Let's we'll go back to the uh, overall severe weather map. There you go. This combines all the threats into one. Uh, if you if you have friends or relatives in San Antonio, Austin, Waco, uh, especially points east, especially points northeast, uh, you know, like I said, for some people, it's spring break they may not be paying attention, uh, and especially if you know people that are outdoors camping. Uh, I know that's a big thing uh, to do during spring break, which I think is awesome. Uh, but if they are, if you know, have friends or family that are camping or outdoors, period, tomorrow, just, you know, if they don't know, make them aware. Just say, just shoot them a text, give them a call. Uh, just tell them, hey, uh, just just make sure you are aware that you could see some bad weather and that they have a place to take shelter if they're outdoors, especially. Uh, but again, anybody in these, the, really even the dark green but dark green yellow orange shaded areas uh yeah they just definitely need to be weather aware that's for sure um let's see so i don't see a whole lot else in the comments i know it's 
getting kind of late uh, in the evening, but I uh, had to kind of get everything uh, ready to go for you. Pop on, there's a lot of graphics to load, so that is uh, <laughs> sometimes I got to make sure that's all taken care of. Uh, I definitely want to uh, answer questions as well for people that want to come on and ask any questions. Definitely answer a few, and I'll give a few more maybe a minute or two for that. If not, then I'll go ahead and sign off. And of course, if you don't catch this on the live version, you can catch it on the uh, replay, which will be on our, my social media channels uh, once I end this recording and process it and upload it. Uh, if you watch it on Facebook, it should be on my feed pretty soon after we end. If you watch me on YouTube or Twitch, uh, well, if you watch me on Twitch, it'll be on there. But if you watch me on YouTube, uh, I'll upload it to the uh to the regular video feed side that way you don't have to look for it uh and so the plan for tomorrow is that it probably won't be a good day for me to actually go chase uh just i think just the cloud cover won't be great although i could be wrong about that so right now my plan is not to do that my plan would be to update everyone uh, from my uh studio here at <laughs> 3296 weather central <laughs> You want to call it that and uh so we'll, we'll definitely be keeping an eye on things here as always so here's the plan for tomorrow in the morning the storm prediction center you know the models will be run again we'll have a little bit better idea of what the day probably will look like and i'll do an update on facebook uh in uh, instagram and twitter on uh you know what we can expect and then uh, really after that, it just depends on what the weather does. If it's, uh, if we do get some bad weather, we get some warnings, things like that, then I'll, I'll definitely pop on live and update everybody and keep everybody up to date on what's going on. Uh, you know, to be honest, I hope I don't have to do that, but I just don't see a scenario uh, to where I wouldn't have to do that. But hey, that's part of it, you know, it's the life in Texas in the spring. So I don't see anybody else commenting. So like I said, I'm going to go ahead and sign off. If you have a comment later, then just, you know, comment on the video and then I'll, I'll do my best to answer it. As always, I'm watching the weather, so you don't have to. Hope everyone has a great evening, what's left of it. And uh, we will talk to you tomorrow, most likely. Talk to you then, guys. Thanks for watching.